No one wants to do the research. No one really needs to know. No one cares about the answer enough to watch the show. Each time I try, gonna get even more frustrated. Each night I cry, why is this theory so complicated? It's a YouTube world we live in. Did you actually have to watch every Videos we watch for free. I've been working on this vid for far, far too long. And I'm going stir crazy for this Pokemon theory. Pokemon theory! Well, my favorite Pokemon is Miss Fampy. Fampy! Miss Fampy. Last episode in our quest to calculate Ash's true age, we used every trick that I had in the book. From island fruit, weather patterns, school schedules, and Japanese exclusive airline clips to make it all the way up to season nine, the Battle Frontier arc, where Ash travels back to Kanto to rest on his yannies, <laughs> I mean rest on his laurels, as the TV studios stalled for time waiting for the next generation of video games. Near the midway point of that season, we'd concluded that Ash was 15 and that it was summer. And remember, every time that we passed May 22nd, we celebrate Ash's birthday. So with all that information in mind, let's not waste any more time because we still have 592 episodes of this darn thing to get through before we're caught up with the series. Oh boy, it's gonna be a long episode. So the next time we see the season's change is in episode 431 overall, or episode 157 by the advanced arc, Time Warp heals all wounds. Which is, without question, the point in this series when all possible craps about the writing were thrown out the window. It is the single strangest episode episode of Pokemon ever created, opening up all sorts of cans of worms that are probably discussed for another day. Don't believe me? Here's what happens in the episode. Ash's travel companion, May, finds herself a locket on the ground, which, for no explainable reason, teleports her back in time with Meowth and Squirtle. That alone would make this an unusual episode of Pokemon, but no! No, they are not done yet. While May is in the past, she changes the course of history by making it snow. So when she teleports forward again, this guy, who used to be dead in the present is suddenly alive, and this train station, which was completely abandoned in the present, is now fully operational. You know what this means? We mess with the space-time continuum and stuff. <laughs> what? I can't even! Usually the most fantastical part of this series is how Brock doesn't get arrested for sexual harassment, but this, this just crosses a line! Anyway, all absurdity aside, you can tell it's winter because it's close to the anniversary of this day and no one thinks it's odd for it to be snowing. I didn't hear anything about a snowstorm today, did you? When is the weatherman ever right? By episode 182 of the Advanced Series, or episode 454 overall of the entire series, we're back to summer. We know this because in the episode channeling the battle zone, Ash catches himself an Apom. An Apom that appears prominently with the rest of his team in the ninth Pokemon movie, Pokemon Ranger and the Battle of the Sea! It's a pretty cool name for a Pokemon movie. It's the Pokemon Ranger! Hi-ho, Silver! It appears that nature's protecting arms have gotten quite a bit warmer than our heroes would like. And because it's summer in the movie, we know that Ash has once again passed his birthday, making him now Sweet 16. From there, we're practically done with the Battle Frontier arc. The season ends in winter with its final episode, Home is Where the Start Is. Even though there isn't snow on the ground, we can tell it's winter based on this shot. A clock showing the time to be 5.05 p.m. just before dusk. Looking at Japanese solar calendars to track sunrise and sunset times across the year, we know that this is either happening in October or February. So long story short, it's about winter as the advanced series finally comes to an end and we prepare to head off to a new region. And you know what that means. A brand new arc means a brand new girl for Ash to have totally platonic relationships with. Episode 1 of Diamond and Pearl introduces us to Dawn, who, just like May before her, is a 10-year-old girl ready to start her Pokemon adventure. And this young lady, Dawn, is one of those people. As her 10th birthday has come and gone, and her Pokemon now waits in the wings. As we established last episode, Pokemon journeys start on April 1st to parallel the Japanese school year. So this means that yet again, we're near Ash's birthday, his 17th birthday. And on that note, can I please make a public service announcement? Dear Tumblr shippers, please remember these ages. Ash is 17, Dawn is 10. If that totally squicks you out, chances are you may be dealing with a problematic fave. Please adjust your fan art accordingly. Other related side note here, the rule of thumb, which was the first thing that I learned about in college, someone just came up and told me this. It was very strange. Anyway, if you're ever asking yourself, is it creepy that I'm dating this young 
younger person, you divide your age by two and then you add seven. That gives you the minimum age of the person you could be dating without it getting too icky. So Ash, yeah, you're squeaking me out, man. And we haven't even gotten to the awkward part of you turning 18 yet. That's when it gets real weird. Figuring out the timeline through the four diamond and pearl seasons is actually pretty darn simple. We just talked about how we're starting in spring and by episode 88, camping it up, we're into summer. We're directly told that this is summer school by the narrator. It's time for Pokemon Summer Academy. And we can double check using the Japanese title for the episode, Pokemon Summer School Course. The summer school adventures carry on for a few episodes before Ash and the gang head to Snow Point City. And it's here that we get a pretty decent jump in time. Although we were just in summer, only 30 episodes later, we're back into winter. And you can tell this based on episode 116, The Drifting Snow Runt, where everyone's caught in a snowstorm. Sure, the town is called Snow Point, but here's the thing. Sinnoh is based on the real world Hokkaido, the northernmost of Japan's main islands. And when I say based on, I mean directly ripped off from. Snow Point in the game directly relates to the city of Wakanai IRL. But here's the thing, even though Wakanai is so far north, it only dips below freezing temperatures between December and March. Meaning that the snowstorm that we see Ash and the crew caught in could only be happening during the winter. By episode 126, we're back in school, meaning that we're in the third trimester of the Japanese school year. But praise Arceus because it's not too long before we're back in summer. How do we know this? Well, we've done this enough times in these two episodes for you to know the drill at this point. Ash catches himself a Pokemon, in this case Monferno in episode 132, which appears in some other Pokemon related thing outside of the main timeline. This time though I'm not talking about an obscure short made for Japanese exclusive airlines, I'm talking about a movie that raked in more than 50 million dollars in the Japanese box office. Arceus and the Jewel of Life, or as Wikipedia literally translates it, Pocket Monsters Diamond and Pearl the Movie. Arceus to conquering space-time, the best Pokemon in all of Pokemon games. Something tells me the people at Wikipedia may have missed fact-checking that one. Although the setting for the movie Machina Town is inspired by Greece, specifically the city of Meteora, which is one of the craziest places I've been to actually, they just have these monasteries on top of pillars of rock that just hang out in the middle of nowhere. It's wild. Machina Town is still set in Sinnoh, and that's how we get our date. Watermelons. They sure are. <laughs> Wow, <laughs> this is our lucky day. Hold on, those watermelons are ours. They were cooling down, but the stream caught them. You see, Hokkaido in real life is indeed known for producing watermelons, including its $200 specialty black watermelons, which all have a harvest season of June through August, thereby making it summer and meaning that once again, Ash has crossed his birthday. 18 years old. 18 years old and still sleeping alone in a tent with a teenager. Nothing creepy to see here, ladies and gentlemen. Nothing creepy. After getting his eighth Sinnoh badge, it's established that there's a one month gap before the start of the league championship. The Sinnoh League is taking place in a month on Lily of the Valley Island. Which basically confirms that by the end of the arc, we're well into autumn. So to recap, 13 seasons and 645 episodes in, we've got ourselves an 18-year-old Ash Ketchum ready to start his black and white adventure. Or do we? Cue the mysterious music. Cue it! C come on, please, please cue the music. You've ruined the dramatic mystery, guys. You see, things start getting a bit sticky here, because it was around this point in the series when the Pokemon Company attempted a shift that many fans consider to be a soft reboot of the series. The idea was to keep Ash as the main character of the series, but then treat him as an adventurer who was starting off for his very first time. Wherever you may find yourself, chances are Pokemon will be there too. And that includes the Kanto region's Pallet Town, home to this young man. 10-year-old Ash Ketchum. This would all be totally fine. I am more than happy to end the episode here, but there's one huge problem. Ash retains all his memories from his past adventures. First, when Dawn rejoins the team... It's been a long time, Ash. So you're the Dawn who traveled all over the Sinnoh region with Ash. And later, when Dawn specifically mentions that Brock cooked for her and Ash on their journey. He'd give Brock a run huh? for his money. Who's Brock, Ash? He's a good friend I was on my journey with for a long time. And in the wider post Pokemon world, time has clearly continued to pass. For a great example, look all the way back to Johto and the episode A Goldenrod Opportunity, where the magnet train specifically needed a year to be completed. And yet, fast forward to the Best Wishes episode Until We Meet Again, where Ash's new friends decide to travel from Kanto to Johto using that exact same train, which shows us that there has indeed been a passage of years here. You're going to the Blackthorn Gym, right Iris? From there, you catch the magnet train to 
Johto. It's almost like they knew an 18-year-old Ash Ketchum was getting awkwardly old to be hanging out with 10-year-old girls, so they decided to boot him back a bit, but not boot him back far enough. I guess. Anyway, since it's all still part of the same canon with the same guy and the same memories, I'm gonna keep treating this character like he's the same Ash. Even if the black and white series sometimes has him acting more like a rookie trainer than someone who's competed in four regional leagues and has saved the world multiple times from overpowered Pokemon gods. So we plow onward to the actual substance of black and white, or best wishes, as it's sometimes called. As I mentioned earlier, when we left Ash at the end of Diamond and Pearl, it was in the autumn following his 18th birthday. Once we got to the Unova region. The Unova region? Uh, excuse me, what, what region? The Unova region. Unova region. Unova region. So pronouncing it may not be as easy as we all thought, but telling the seasons is, thank the Grudon, because of the existence of Deerling, a Pokemon that has different appearances depending on the season. At the start of Ash's Unova journey, we see Deerling in its pink color spring form. They then switch to summer form in episodes 54 and 55 of the season. And with the Deerling now in its summer form, it means we've once again passed May 22nd, and another birthday for Ash, thereby making him 19. Oh, wow. We're going by boat. I'm totally psyched. What a kid. You girls don't know the half of it. And believe it or not, but the Deerlings stay in their summer form for the rest of the Black and White series. Episodes 85, 90, 92, 112, 114, 117, 118, 127, and 137 all have summer form Deerling. Towards the end of Black and White's third season, Adventures in Yenova, we get a reminder that the autumn migration is coming, which solidifies the idea that all of these episodes are still happening in the summer. They're all beginning their migration. Once again, there's a two-month gap between Ash of obtaining the last required gym badge and actually challenging the league for the region, so the Unova League event must happen sometime during the late summer or early fall of that year, with Ash still at age 19. So progress check, that is 17 seasons done and 799 episodes covered. Ladies and gentlemen, we are in the final stretch. Now where most of Black and White occurred during the summer, most of X and Y occurred during the fall. We can figure out when he arrives in Kalos for the XY series by looking at one of the season's earliest episodes, A Jolting Switcheroo, which takes place in a vineyard as the grapes are ripening. As any wine connoisseur will probably tell you, grapes tend to hit peak ripeness around late summer and early fall, the same time that Ash was done with his business in Yenova. We get another mid-series time confirmation in the 73rd episode of the XY series, A Fashionable Battle, where the camera shows us falling autumn leaves in the sky. And lastly, there's episode 98, Dream a Little Dream from Me, where the characters take a break from their journey to camp outside and observe the lit Leonid an annual meteor shower based on the real-life event, the Leonids, named after the constellation Leo. Except in the Pokemon universe, that meteor shower is totally more lit fam! <laughs> yep, 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 yep. This real-life meteor shower peaks in November, telling us yet again that this final part of the XY story arc is still happening during the fall, and it stays that way through to the end of the last episode. And with that, at the end of the XY arc, Ash is 19 and a half, which I gotta admit feels kinda weird. Time was flying for Ash in the earlier seasons, but after that soft reboot at the top of Black and White, each arc has only seemed to take a couple months. It's almost like they realized that they were making him too old for his own good. And once again, technically, I could end things here. There's a lot of agreement that the most recent arc, Sun and Moon, are the start of a new canon. At least, that's what the staff of the show wants you to think. Quote, This is not a continuation of Pokemon X, Y, and Z. It's a completely new Satoshi. Ash, and Pikachu. But dear theorists, if I've taught you anything over the course of this series, do not believe everything that you're told at face value. They are lying to us. The show goes out of its way to show us that, hey, this isn't just a character who happens to have the same name and roughly the same appearance as the Ash Ketchum we all know and tolerate. The first episode of Sun and Moon specifically makes the point of mentioning the fact that he caught a bunch of Tauros in the Kanto Safari Zone. Actually, I'm good at dealing with Tauros. See, I've caught some. We are still very clear clearly rolling with the same group of characters with some familiar faces from Kanto that Ash seems to recognize. Let me introduce you! They're my friends, and we've all traveled together before! They even have a collective flashback to some of the key events from the first season of the show! We did lots of things, and had lots of fun. 
Although not everything was fun. So yet again, I call foul. This is still the same 19 and a half year old Ash Ketchum. We are following his adventure in these episodes to the absolute bitter end. So the question is, when does Sun and Moon start? Well, it's harder to track the seasons in the Alolo region because it's based on Hawaii, which is tropical all year round. Likewise, there are some episodes that take place with visible snow, but that's because they take place on a mountain where it snows year round due to climate and elevation, not due to seasons. Luckily though, we get a reference point during the first episode of the Sun and Moon arc. There are vendors selling seasonal produce, which we're told is all fresh. The berries at this market are always fresh and delicious. Sounds great. In that episode, we see lychees being sold, which peak in the summer months between May and September, which means that this season does start during the summer months. In other words, Ash would have turned 20 years old, which makes it kind of awkward that he's still acting like a hyperactive kid who runs off whenever he sees an interesting looking Pokemon. Hey, don't let the world kill your enthusiasm, Ash Ketchum. No need to be embarrassed about being excited, friend. You do you. And that's where things sit for now. Everything in Alola up to this point has seemed to be happening in the summer months. As for how old Ash is by the end of Sun and Moon, well, that information will have to wait since the current season is still airing. But based on the creators slowing down time for Ash in these more recent seasons, I'm gonna say that Alola ends at the end of summer or late fall, which means he'll still be 20 probably by the end of Sun and Moon. So there you have it. After researching this topic for literal days out of my life, I think I have the most definitive answer that we will ever get. Ash is 19 years and 6 months old at the end of the events of the XY series and turns 20 shortly before the events of Sun and Moon. You haven't changed one bit. <laughs> I haven't changed, have I? Sorry, Ash. I think you've changed a lot more than you realize. Just watch out for that midlife crisis. It's sooner than you think. But hey, that's just a theory. A game theory. Probably took years off my own life doing it. Hey, if you're in the mood for another Pokemon episode, I have a bunch. Check out the one to the left, or check out the one to the right. They're ones from earlier generations of the game and probably came out at a time when you weren't watching this channel, so they're new to you. Check them out, they're actually really good, all about evolution and stuff. We have so many Pokemon episodes, I am so sick of talking about Pokemon right now. Holy cow, that was such a long episode.